Hello, and welcome to BigBookCTK.com. My name is Tosi, and I'm reading Paradise Lost by John Milton, Book 5. Now mourn her rosy steps in the eastern climb advancing, so the earth with orient pearl, when Adam waked, so accustomed for his sleep, was eerie light from pure digestion bread. And temperate vapours bland, which is the only sound of leaves and fuming rills, auroras fan, lightly disperse, and the shrill matin song of birds on every bough, so much the more his wonder was to find on wakened eve, with tresses discomposed and glowing cheek, as though on quiet rest, he on his side, leaning half raised, with looks of cordial love, hung over her enamoured, and beheld beauty, which, whether waking or asleep, shot forth, sh- shot forth peculiar graces, then with voice mild, as when Zephyrus on Flora breathes, her hand soft touching, whispered thus, Awake, my fairest, my espoused, my latest found, heaven's last best gift, my ever new delight. Awake, the morning shines, and the fresh field calls us. We lose the prime to mark how spring are our tender plants, how blows the citron grove, what drops the myrrh, and what the balmy reed, how nature paints her colours, how the bee sits on the bloom, extracting liquid sweet. Such whispering, whispering waked her, but with startled eye on Adam, whom embracing, thus she spake, O soul in whom my thoughts find all repose, my glory, my perfection, glad I see thy face, and morn returned, for I this night, such night, till this I never passed, have dreamed, if dreamed, not as I oft am want of thee, works of day past, or morrow's next design, but of offence and trouble, which my mind knew never till this irksome night. Methought close at mine ear, one called me forth to walk with gentle voice. I thought it thine, it said, why sleeps thou, Eve? Now is a pleasant time. The cool, the silent, Save where silence yields to the night warbling bird that now awake tune sweeter his love laboured song. Now reigns full orbed the moon, and with more pleasing light, shadowy sets off the face of things in vain. If none regard, heaven wakes with all his eyes, whom to behold but thee, nature's desire, in whose sight all things joy with ravishment. Attracted by thy beauty still to gaze, I rose as at thy call, but found thee not. To find thee I directed then my walk, and on me thought, alone I passed three ways, that brought me on a sudden to the tree of interdicted knowledge. Fair it seemed, much fairer to my fancy than by day, and as I wandering looked, beside it stood, one shaped and winged like one of those from heaven, but us off seen, his dewy locks distilled ambrosia. On that tree he also gazed, and O oh, fair plant, said he, with fruit surcharged, things none to ease thy load and taste thy sweet, nor God nor man, is knowledge so despised, or envy, or what reserve forbids to taste. Forbid who will, none shall from me withhold longer thy offered good. Why else set here? This said he paused not, but with venturous arm he plucked. He tasted, me damp horror chilled, at such bold words, vouched with a deed so bold. But he thus overjoyed, O fruit divine, sweet of thyself, but much more sweet thus cropped, forbidden here, it seems as onely fit for God, yet able to make gods of men. And why not gods of men, since good, the more communicated, more abundant grows, the also not impaired, but honoured more? 
thank you very much for watching. You've been listening to Paradise Lost by John Milton. My name is Pussy, and this is BigButtheCTK.com. Thank you very much, and bye for now.